In verse 11, Moses gets back on track after explaining that return and restoration are possible when Israel falls away. They don't have to remain in permanent exile. And he is, resumes by saying something that completely refutes another rather common Christian doctrine that needs to be relegated to the waste bin. Moses says that the terms of the covenant, the Torah, the law, is not too hard for Israel to do. The Torah is not unintelligible. It's not inaccessible. It's not part of those hidden things of God. It's revealed. We have it. We're to obey it. In an earlier chapter, Moses instructed that at Mount Gerizim and at Mount Ebal, enormous flat stones plastered and then inscribed with the words of the Torah were to be erected and the words placed upon them were to be plainly written. That was stressed, plainly written. The idea expressed here is that while the priests and the Levites are indeed teachers and administrators of the Torah, they're not the source of the law. They're not the only ones capable of comprehending its meaning. They're not the only ones capable of observing the laws and commandments. They're for everybody. So not only is the Torah knowable, it's also at hand. It's doable, and God fully expects it to be done. How often have we heard that the reason that the New Covenant was instituted is because the Mosaic Covenant was impossible to keep, and God knew that? Wrong. Right here in verses 11 through 14, Yehovah through Moses says explicitly, the law is not too hard for you. Therefore, says verse 15, here is the summation of what the Torah is all about. On the one hand, life and prosperity. On the other hand, death and adversity. Life and prosperity equals the blessing. Death and adversity equals the curse of the law. But, and here's the secret to living the Torah life as God intends, there are three ingredients necessary to retain and maintain our relationship with the Lord. Verse 16 tells us the three ingredients are love your God, walk in His ways, keep His commandments. There it is. I want to paraphrase this in more modern terms. Trust God, of course that means trusting His Messiah. Live your life according to biblical principles. And third, obey the Torah. Trust, live, obey. That's the secret. And it isn't much of a secret. To obey the commandments without first trusting God is worthless. To trust God but to be disobedient is a fruitless life. To observe the biblical commandments but to not trust God, to not have a personal relationship with Him, well, this just relegates us to permanent separation from Him. And in verse 17, Moses again cautions that to know the law but to turn away from God means exile. You can know it all day long. But if you turn away from Him, you'll be exiled. To mix in the worship of other gods with the worship of Jehovah means exile. So, don't. Choose life. This is what it means when it says in the New Testament that it is God's will that all be saved. He says, please, choose life. It is God's will that Israel and we Choose life and the blessing of the covenant by means of trusting that Yeshua is our Savior, that Yeshua is God. But notice the three-part commandment. In order to live the kind of life that a believer should, obedience to God's commandments is necessary. There's no other way. Disobedience draws us closer and closer to that line in the sand. 
Disobedience taken to a high enough level, and I'll, only God knows where that level is, puts us across that line. Now we're separated from him.